Irishman goes to Jesus and asks the question, is there ever going to be any peace in Northern Ireland? And Jesus said, yes, someday, but maybe not in your lifetime. And a rabbi goes to Jesus and says, is there going to be oh, peace? Hello. You all right? I'm fine. That was funny. Oh. That chair's broken. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. All right, is there going to be peace in the Middle East? And Jesus looks at him and said, yeah, someday, but probably not in your lifetime. And he says, okay. He says, what about Washington? Is there Democrats, Republicans, Obamacare? Are they ever going to get that together? And Jesus says, not in my lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we begin. Um, my, my, uh, my talk was on the mentality of the CEO. Um, we've been around this organization long enough. Things come in, and you read them. And, you know, we spend most of our time talking about the method of how we do it and school leaders. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time on what the talks are. Uh, the manuals are there for a leader and, and do a wonderful job um, of, uh, of following the process and what has worked. And the Secretariat seems to go through different phases over the years of being very, very strict to the letter of the law of how this happens. And then there's times when people kind of said, well, you know, maybe we can do this, or maybe we can kind of add this. Stay with the basics, but do this. And over the years, you know, it's had various degrees of success. There's been some things done that were pretty neat, pretty powerful, some things that were done that were pretty bad. And what sometimes happens, even, uh, even over time, is even some of those little things become part of it. And uh, now every time we need to have flowers on the table, or we need to do this, or we need to have these kinds of posters. And somebody says, well, why do we need to do that? What's the answer everybody gives? Exactly. And that happens in the church quite often. And that happens in society a lot, too. Over time, people do things religiously. They do it very well. But they kind of forget why. <clears throat> and so I was kind of excited. I was reading through this, kind of preparing for this a little bit. And... Uh, We've done this before. I mean, we have had discussions, certainly at the, um, on the secretary level at least, but even, um, you know, weekends or stuff like that, where people do say, well, why do we do this? Well, why are we here? Why did that type of thing? Um, and this mentality um, is, what, uh, is what my talk is about. Um, the first quotation comes from um, um, Eduardo, the founder. Curcios and Christianity consist of proclaiming the best news, the best reality, that God and Jesus Christ loves us, communicated by the best means, which is friendship directed toward the best of each other, which is the person, his capacity of conviction, decision, and constancy. Would you repeat that for me? <laughs> All right. It's a big, long definition. Uh, <coughs> They talk about uh, the mentality of Christian. I mean, of, of, of the mentality of Curcio in Christianity. Nothing more, le nothing less than what's fundamental to being a Christian. Okay. See, people, even not knowing a lot about Curcio, they'll ask, "What is it? Is it Catholic? Is it part of the Archdiocese? Where did it come from? Is it a separate group, or what is it?" And it's always an interesting question because, as a matter of fact, we are in the Archdiocese. Archbishop Tobin made a curcio. He's excited about it, but we don't have an office downtown. We're not funded by the diocese. We may get a grant now and then, but curcio is pretty much a lay, play, a lay organization of people that follow Jesus Christ. There's a method to how that's done. We don't always ask the question, why do we do that? Um, the expression <clears throat> can be expressed in capturing understanding, believing, appreciating. Uh, 
capturing this reality. God in Jesus Christ loves us, offers friendship. Understanding is a reality that something invented by Priscilla, but rather a reality that exists from our baptismal call. Okay? Bottom line, we're baptized Catholics, and in the Catholic Church, Priscilla exists there. That's probably, if nothing else, um, <clears throat> when people, when you're baptized, go out and share the gospel. Priscilla is one of those methods that we do that. It's proven to be a very good method. Um, appreciating, appreciating Jesus Christ in our lives, and that by the very nature of the gospel, we are called to share them. Now they talk about the mentality of Priscilla, four pillars. The gospel, common sense, faith, and person. Now, some of that Vera Lee will get into one of her talks. She kind of drew the lay version of the mentality. Somewhat of the how, I'm not going to give her a talk for her. She'll do a very fine job on her own. But from my standpoint, the doctrinal part of this, you know, part of this is how does Crucio relate to church? Um, and, and I want to do that in kind of two ways. Um, about a year and a half ago, I was in Rome, and we were with airport chaplains, and they're chaplains all over the world. Um, most of them priests, a few sisters, and uh, some volunteers there too, okay? And when we go to Rome, there's this little office of migrant and intern workers, which is at the bottom rung of the Vatican. It's kind of like the outhouse. I mean, it's, it's not a very prestigious office. In fact, it's not even in the Vatican. It's down um, by uh, Trastevere. But anyway, um, so they have this uh, presentation every two years, bring everybody together. Well, this year, it was on evangelization in the church, the new evangelization. And in a nutshell, uh, the Holy Father, at the time, was Benedict, but um, was really pushing, and it, what it boiled down to was getting Catholics, existing Catholics, excited about their faith and sharing it, evangelizing. Um, you know, many of our, the setup in parishes, in a lot of ways, are kind of self-serving when you get down to it. Most of the fundraisers might be for building, sometimes athletics. Um, many times the parish council will spend lots of time talking about maintenance items. Uh, they'll get a report from religious education. Some of the religious education programs are beautiful, they're powerful. Some of them so-so, and some of them are, you know, going through the motions. Um, not necessarily that's a reflection on the people running them. Sometimes it's sheer numbers, sometimes it's money, whatever it is. But we don't always spend a lot of time on evangelization, which is share of the gospel. Um, for whatever reason, uh, some churches do that better than others. And so we had these talks by some cardinals, which were <coughs> pretty boring, to be honest with you. But um, we had the talks, but afterwards they break up into groups. And how does this relate to airport ministry? How can we be evangelizers? Well, our little group starts talking, and the gist of our group kind of got around, well, you know, at the airport, it's a, it's a good place to meet people. Lots of people going through the airport. Sometimes they'll see a chapel. Uh, I'm a chaplain in this airport in Indianapolis, by the way. Well, there's eight of us, but I'm one of them. Uh, opportunities all the time. Uh, people that haven't been to church or confession in years. Here's a priest I'll never see again. They will alone, trust me. <laughs> Which is powerful. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm very honored to do that. But it's a real golden opportunity. But just in a nutshell, it was almost by the time we got done, and I shut my mouth, which is the first, but um, there were a couple other people in there. And at the end of our discussion, it got to be, well, evangelization is one-on-one. -on -one. It's not sending out postcards. It's not doing this. It's reaching out to a friend. <clears throat> and when you make friends with somebody, 
you share things. And one of the things you share is Jesus Christ. And you bring that. And someone says, make a friend, bring a friend. Hey, that's Curcio. <laughs> and we start talking about Curcio. And honest to God, that's what the evangelization thing pretty much boiled down to. And we got up and we made a beautiful presentation about all that. Wow, 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 wow. It was Garcia well And it, it was that. Um, we got back uh, later on um, in the Vatican Rights Reports. They always reflect exactly what was done. We had some things in there that were kind of interesting, which never got published. But for me, <laughs> it was a real affirmation of what we're doing. Uh, interesting. Um, the biggest why, besides of these very basic steps of that, is evangelization. And we always have to be careful that we don't just evangelize for pursuit. And that's the thing that sometimes can be divisive. Some of you have been uh, involved with Christ Renews' his parish. Powerful, okay? Good stuff brings people closer to Jesus. But there's always a danger to people get overzealous and they present and they give a message that if you don't make Christ for news, you're not a very good Catholic. Why don't you come and join us? If you haven't made Curcio, you know, you haven't quite made it. And that can be eternal. That's something we've got to kind of be careful with. Because on the one hand, the mentality of Curcio, why we do this is because of our baptism. And we do this as Catholics to share our faith. As simple as that, but as difficult as that is. Uh, so there's always that, that danger there. And one of the beauties of Curcio, from a pastoral point of view, is people come back to the parish and they are excited about Jesus Christ. And it's the parish's an opportunity to fit them in and to bring them. Uh, from a pastoral standpoint, Curcio, um, for me, is just a really a special, I hate to use the word tool, because it's not, I don't, I don't, that doesn't really say everything, but there are people, lots of them, that kind of come in, I've been a Catholic, I go to church every Sunday, uh, my kids are all gone, and uh, you know, I'm just not finding anything. I'm not sure where I go from here. And you mentioned something about Curcio, Talk to them about it a little bit. Make sure maybe give them the, 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 uh, the booklet. But you can't do it that way. It has to be a kind of a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and that's the beauty of the Curcio method. It's the personal sharing of faith. I hope we never, ever get away from that. I'm always nervous when we talk about getting bigger and expanding that we lose that person-to-person -person contact. But from the church standpoint, with Curcio, even when we were talking to Archbishop Tobin, he actually was getting excited as we talked to him about it. And his wheels were turning. Uh, not just numbers, because he's a big one. Um, his attitude is almost, you know, when somebody comes in and says, okay, we want to do uh, connecting the spirit. We want to get to say, no, okay, what do we do after that? What's the follow-up? Does this really have some continuity, or is it, as you used to say in the 60s with some of those, um, those records or things like that, one-hit wonders? Um, you know, I mean, the reality is the service that Curcio does to the church, um, if you take, there's a roughly 10,000, I think, Curcius as we've had over the last, I mean, if you do the math real quick, I think it's, it's, it's around, we, we put 6,000 people through Curcio. Since yeah. day one? Okay, I exaggerated. 6,000. Um, wait a minute. Okay. 50, uh, 50 years times uh, 120. Okay, okay. That's about the numbers, give or take a few. Okay. <clears throat> but the vast majority make the weekend, and we don't see it. And part of our, part of our dilemma always is, gosh, you know, what happened to them? Why aren't they grouping? Why aren't, we, why aren't they coming off trail? Why aren't they doing all that? And, yeah, some of that's frustrating, but 
I see people that perish all the time, that made a weekend and never come back, but it was a life-changing moment. And Jesus' ministry, you read the New Testament, how many times and how many powerful experiences, we never know what happened. Jesus planted the seeds. You know, they were kind of, where did that man go when he said to go sell and give it to the poor? Where did those nine lepers go? You know, every time you hear in church, ungrateful so-and-sos, what if they were out giving praise and glory to God? What if they couldn't wait to go home and tell people? Now, who are we to assume right away the fact that they didn't come back and say thank you? Uh, sometimes when I hear people complain and say, well, you know, they don't grow up, they don't do all that. In a sense, they never came back to say thank you. Well, then why do we do it? If we did it just for somebody to say thank you or just to swallow up the Curcio numbers, you know, yeah, there's numbers in that. But if we serve the Lord, we serve the Lord. And when you give something in love, it's a gift. And when you catch yourself, even in, you know, do something nice, you know, some people bow and say Vincent to Paul, and you take a big thing of groceries in the house, and you set them down, I go, I'm not eating that crap. What's our first reaction to something? Well, I'll take it back. I won't come back to that house again. But you give a gift. You present it. If you reject it, that's fine. You've done it with the Lord. You've done it for that reason. And that part of the <clears throat> why we do that sometimes gets lost. But what Crescio does in the evangelization, what it does um, in terms of allowing people, in a sense, to practice their faith. It's a wonderful way to practice being a Catholic. The method is right there. There's opportunities for witness. There's opportunities for service. There's opportunities to change people's lives. So when you get down to that, it's, it's good every once in a while to ask ourselves, why did I come today? Well, part of the reason is Ellen Sanders called. Ellis Sanders is excited about this. If you haven't figured that one out yet, you're brain dead, okay? <laughs> well, she calls, and she's excited. This was a crazy day. There's no way you can say no. You can't. She's excited about what's going on. John Amos gets wound up every once in a while. Excited about that, okay? So, when we hear them and their excitement, we're excited to go tell somebody else. And that is part of the method. That's part of being a friend. I've worked on plenty of teams over the years. Every single time at the end of the weekend, I'm excited. And, and, and it's a gift. It's a gift. And they're not the same. And, and every, it amazes me. Every time you get together with a team that first night, you look around and think, well, oh, this ought to be good. <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you find different people and you're thinking, oh, well. Or, you know, sometimes it's during a really busy time of the year and you're thinking, oh, my God. You know, and you get your calendar out and you find out how much you got to move around and all that. The weekend comes and, uh, at least for me, part of that why happens Sunday night. When people get up and say, this made a difference. And I know Jesus better. And I want to go out and I want to do that. And I want to proclaim that. And they go out and do that. How many of them come back? Maybe not as many as we would like. But the core group that continues is, for me, you know, one of the greatest arms of the church that there is. Even though we're not really an arm. But in a sense, with an Archbishop Tobin, what a wonderful gift that Priscilla is to the church. And... At the end of the day, we're basically following our baptismal things. There's nothing complicated. We get it complicated, and we get it complicated in the parishes. They get it complicated in the Vatican. Well, how are we going to do this? Well, we need to make a policy about it. We need to figure all this out. That's all necessary. You know, I, I act like it's a pain. It is a pain. But that's why we're here today. Some people have taken the time over the 50 years, every once in a while, to stop and say, why are we doing this? Is this the right way we're supposed to be doing this? And who are we serving? And, you know, things have changed. Who would have ever thought that we would have had 
secretarial meetings on a webinar. You know, I mean, it's unthought of. You know, and yet, it works. The website. You know, all kinds of things that have changed, which means we have to change with something. Um, but back to this, uh, the, the church part of this, when you get right down to it, it's a simple <coughs> response to our baptism. Uh, John, first letter of John, talks about see what love the Father in letting us be called children of God. What we shall later be has yet to be revealed. And her seal is one of those revealing moments. One of those opportunities where all of us not only can live out what we're called to be, baptized Christians, followers of Jesus Christ. In that, in the very gospel, uh, you know, one of the pillars of this is the gospel. I love the way he talked about it. The gospel is not something you carry under your arm. It's lived. Well, this is on tape. Well, um, one of my pink bubbles, I heard it when I was at the seminary. People pick up the gospel and parade around church and they incense them, they light candles and they bow. One of our scripture guys look up and says, it's a bunch of paper. It's a paper book. What do they carry it around for? The gospel, first of all, was done orally. And the gospel should be lived. You know, yeah, it's written down in there. But the gospel needs to be lived. We need to live as believers of Jesus Christ, which involves the action. Back to Perseal, 101. That's how we do that. It's not the only one. We've got charismatics. We've got people at Holy Rosary that enjoy a Latin mass, that enjoy Gregorian chant. Uh, we've got all kinds of people. And, and you know, our church is big enough for everybody. And there's times when we tend to clash with people and liberal, conservative, you know, we want this kind of music, we need this. And Perseo is one of those special groups among them. But I think her seal does as well as any group of being inclusive. And you've all been on enough weekends. And we have Catholics from all sides of those that come to her seal. And what her seal also does is the commonality. We boil down to it. We're baptized Catholics. We're followers of Jesus Christ. And this is how we do that. It's a wonderful method to do it. And it's, it's, it's for me one of the, I mean, I've had enough sense to go home for many, many years because I've enjoyed it and I see what it does for the church. And, and I'm glad once in a while we stop and say, hey, why are we doing this? And, and to look at that in our own lives, ask that question, and then respond to it. I think that's all I had. Um, oh, yeah, one more line. I'll close with one more line. Irish mother. Uh, couldn't wake her kid up at church on Sunday. Comes in. Seamus, get up. It's time to go to church. I don't want to go to church. Get up. you got to go to church. Why? I don't want to go to church. Keeps kicking in. He finds, I don't like them and they don't like me. Give me two good reasons why I ought to go to church. Well, number one, you're a baptized Catholic. And number two, you're the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I can't always take it.